What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Learning to Draw and Paint with Yupari, a supplemental video series for viewers and students that will be taking in-person classes with me. So today we are going to cover landscape painting and intro to color. So an introduction to color is going to be given in this class. So remember those of you that are taking in-person classes with me, this is going to be a demo that I'm going to do also in person for you so you will have this video to watch in case anything was missed in class those of you that are not in my in-person classes uh, this is definitely a going to be a fun video for you to draw and paint along with more particular paint along with so let's get into the colors and let's talk a little bit about color first uh, before we get into the demonstration so you are going to have the primaries only consisting of red, yellow, and blue. And then to the primaries, you're going to add secondaries. So what is a secondary? So if you mix blue and yellow to primaries, you get a secondary, which is green. So if you mix blue and yellow, you get a green. If you mix red and yellow, you get orange. That's another secondary. If you mix blue and red, certain types of blue and red, you will get a violet. That's another secondary. And that's it. Uh, the information for the materials is going to be so simple for you. Have a red, have a yellow, have a blue, have an orange, have a green, have a violet and of course have white. Uh, I'm using titanium white and it's that simple. It's that simple. So uh, in terms of color, this is the last thing we're going to talk about and this is all the color theory you need to know is that yellow has a complement, red has a complement, and blue has a complement. Not like, oh you look great today, well thank you, thank you, thank you, that's a compliment. But no, uh, for example, if you mix red and green, you get, they kill each other off and they neutralize. If you mix yellow and orange, yellow and orange neutralize and they kill each other off. If you mix, um, let me see, if you mix violet and yellow, they neutralize. So remember, blue and orange neutralize, yellow and violet neutralize red and green neutralize that's all the color theory you need that's it that's all the color theory you need the rest is pure color study pure practice and now let's go ahead and just get into the demonstration so i'm going to use a tad bit of raw umber to draw with but not to paint with i'm just using it to draw with and the drawing is going to be very simple so i'm going to pick my horizon line which is going to be about there and now uh, that's just one line right there. Now we're gonna pick another line here for the border of that uh, beach looking scene. And I'm going to do the best that I can to explain that the same notion of shape and value is the same with any subject matter. So that's it. that's it, that's all the drawing that I need. A line there, a little zigzag there, and that's it. Now the rest is going to consist of painting. So uh, now you're going to get a little bit of blue. If you have cobalt blue, use that. Uh, ultramarine blue is what I'm using. So I'm using ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add a tad bit of phthalo turquoise and a little bit of daxazine purple. If you don't have these colors, don't worry about it. The color is a very subjective thing. Now that on its own, you see it there? That is way too bright blue. How do I kill off blue? How do I neutralize it? It's complement. Remember, it's complement. It is orange. So I'm using one of my orange colors there, which is basically just uh, cadmium orange. And now it's all of a sudden, it's less intense. Now I'm going to add white to it. And what you want is, a dark thinned out color like that so that's a dark and thinned out color there so now I'm going to use a little more of my mineral spirit and we're going to cover 
a shape that is darker than what we intend to use. I can make this... There we go. I can make that a little more clear for you. So remember, do not memorize color mixtures. All you really need to memorize are color complements, colors that complement one another. So red and green complement each other. Yellow and violet complement each other. And uh, orange and blue complement each other. And that's it. Now in terms of the technique, we're using Alla Prima. So we're using wet on wet painting. And the goal here is to put in a darker shade of value per shape. So when we were toning the canvas, in the beginning, the last time that we were painting, this is essentially what we're doing, but we're adding a tone per zone of the painting. And this is a technique known as Alla Prima. The most famous person that I can think of that you probably know of uh, that used Alla Prima is Bob Ross. Now Bob Ross was an excellent, excellent uh, showman. He would uh, he would demonstrate these quick and simple paintings in the blink of an eye, and he was so brilliant at how he in instructed you through it. But he didn't really explain uh, why certain effects worked. Uh, so, for example, like I don't think I ever really heard him say anything about color theory he kind of just would tell you exactly what to mix and try not to get paint on yourself like I just did uh, so remember blue neutralizes with orange New blue neutralizes with orange and it gives you a nice not so strong blue and now what you want to do is thin out the paint you see it went a little bit more green there but that's okay all this is is a part of the painting that we're going to build onto so for example if it gets a little dark there that's perfectly fine so uh, landscape has a lot to do with paint handling more than anything portraiture has to do with uh, drawing more than anything uh, drawing is a huge thing with portraiture which it, which is what makes it so difficult but with landscape the difficulty is in the paint handling because who cares if we put the sky a little bit to the top a little bit to the bottom who gives the darn right who cares if we get it in the wrong spot uh, but the technical wizardry of getting something to look like something now that is the magic in landscape. So now that we've covered that shape right there, now we're going to cover something here. And now we're actually going to mix right into the same mixture. Now, a lot of you hardcore landscape painters out there are watching this and you're like, but he's not doing this in plein air. And in fact, I'm using a reference to a John Constable painting, which is in the link in the description box of this video. So once again, I created this brownish color. And look at this, I can go a different route. I can go yellow and violet. Yellow and violet, cadmium yellow and dioxazine purple. They neutralize each other pretty nice, uh, pretty nice. And I'm gonna thin out the paint. And yes, this is going to look really dark. And you're like, what is he doing? Is he, is he mad? Why is he adding this dark? And I'm telling you, from your technical learning, follow along with these steps and trust me. Just trust me. I'm using darker paint because with Alla Prima, with Alla Prima, it is easier to add light on top of dark than it is to add dark on top of light. Now Bob Ross, he would do the opposite. He would put white on the canvas and then he would add his darks onto that and that was using his magic white. That's what he called it, uh, the magic white. And uh, the magic white, I don't really know what it is, but a lot of people think that 
it's just linseed oil and um it's just linseed oil and and white but who knows really i'm using phthalo turquoise ultramarine blue and now this is going to be darker than this maybe it's going to be a tad bit lighter than this or it might be the same value doesn't quite matter all it has to be is a blue i use phthalo turquoise and ultramarine blue and I'll throw in a little bit of alizarin permanent into it, which is a is a violet type red. But you don't even have to add the red to it. You don't have to. So now I'm thinning out the paint. And essentially all we're doing is toning the canvas and we're preparing it for action. We're preparing it for all of the fun stuff that we're going to do to make this landscape look like something realistic, uh, look like a real scene. And the power of titanium white is going to be what's going to enable us to do that. So what you want to do is now kill off all of the white of the canvas. Kill it all off. Make sure that none of it is left. And uh, if there's a little bit showing here and there, that's okay. But you don't want too much of it showing. And now we have completely covered all of the light of the canvas. And now we're going to be able to jump in here and make some stuff happen so we're going to start off here on the on the uh, sandy area so i'm going to add white to a little bit of orange white to a little bit of orange and that's it just white to a little bit of orange everyone nothing that in incredibly complicated and i switched to a bristle brush and now the paint is going to flow with much more facility and we're going to now start to subdivide shapes into smaller shapes. So see how we're starting to add the light of the pier and that little, um, I think that's a lighthouse in the, in the background there, but you don't need to worry about it because it's not on the screen for you. Uh, we're going to add the smaller shapes onto the bigger shapes. So now this goes up here. This creates a plane change up there spots that we want to be darker like right there we're just going to leave alone we're going to come back to it and paint in a specific color for it but i'm simplifying a lot of stuff uh, for you with this process and a little more white and now we have a little subdivision right there for one plane and another plane so now what i'm going to do is add even more white and in fact I dropped the brush but in fact I missed the spot right here I just noticed that there was a little bit of white left so now I'm actually going to add a little more titanium white to the brush and we're going to subdivide it yet again and we're going to add another plane over here and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it just a little bit of yellow so we have a little more pop to the light over here most important stuff is light and shadow we're going to talk about more complicated things like atmospheric perspective and linear perspective later on but just trust me uh, i'm keeping this very simple as simple as i can possibly keep it now i'm forming that little shape there and now what we're going to do is we're going to switch brushes here and we're going to get pure titanium white pure titanium white and we're going to run across the horizon line just like this. Remember I said this is a, the paint wizardry. This is the paint handling coming into play here. One bold line over there. And color is studied through color relationships. And uh, the best thing to do is to take what I'm doing and replicate it as well as you can. Just replicate what I'm doing. When it comes to actually learning how to paint in color relationships, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as I go. So what is important is that you're working with big shapes of color. So for example, now that I have this shape here, I can now ask myself, well, what about the bottom shape here? What should it be in relationship to this? It's all about relationships. So it should be a little bit more blue. And you want to think in color. You want to feel the color. Uh, so I'm adding a little bit of phthalo turquoise. And I just want it to be a brighter blue, so I added a little more phthalo turquoise, why not? And now we're adding right there a single little brush stroke following along 
that line right there. And now what happens is this starts to get a lot darker as we move down. Now the trick is going to be you're actually going to go back and forth between light and dark. So this right now is light going into the dark. But what we're going to want to do actually is go back even even so to the light and push it even brighter. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the phthalo turquoise. I cleaned off the brush with just a touch of mineral spirits. You don't want to slam the brush into a big bucket of mineral spirits like Bob Ross did. That's not good for your health, but um, it's good for entertainment purposes. And now you see how bright the phthalo turquoise is with the white, a lot of light. Now, if you don't have phthalo turquoise, just use cobalt blue or ultramarine blue if that's what you got. Now uh, we've got that light there. Now we're going to go up to the clouds and we're going to use the same brush, more white. And we're going to let this just mix into it and then there's going to be clouds up here and you have to pick and choose the direction of the light and shadow on the clouds. It's not so important where the clouds land. What's important is that you have light and shadow shapes that follow a specific pattern. And I can, like I said, just add straight white to this. And this is just like how Bob Ross would paint his clouds, but of course his clouds would happen in the blink of an eye because he would go and do little zigzags like that and he would create the illusion of the clouds very uh, effortlessly. But I'm explaining to you how that effect actually worked and that is because you're adding wet paint into wet paint. In his case, he added the blue of the sky first and we're adding uh, the light into the blue in such a way that we have a little bit more control over the drawing of each specific cloud. Now because we worked a lot uh, darker, this gives us more control actually of the value range because more white makes it lighter. And even then, if I add a ton of white, see how I can do this? I can drag this down, drag it down, and now I can start to have gradations with the clouds. And all of a sudden, we're going to start to get clouds. Just drag it down, drag it down. No worries at all. Drag it down and just feel out what you want your patterns to be. Clouds have highlights too, so each brush stroke is going to give me a little bit of a highlight for the clouds. And even now, I can actually just take this brush and add this white right here and I can start to push the light over here. Now all of a sudden everyone, it just accelerated a little bit and a little bit of light right there pulling in a sharp angle there because yes we need sharp, we need sharp edges just as we need soft edges there starts to give you a little bit more form and yes if the pace has now accelerated now more stuff is starting to happen so what I did is I dulled out the color on this brush by mixing right onto the bottom plane of this and it's actually giving me a little bit more control so adding a little zigzag here just trust me on this I'm, I'm skipping a lot of information but I'm making this much easier for you to create an image that is uh, fun to look at and that has depth to it. Now I'm mixing right into this blue, creating a gray, more gray kind of blue, and sweep, 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 sweep. Don't keep it symmetrical, but as close to asymmetrical as you can. You don't want tap, 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 tap. You don't want these shapes to be like that, equidistant from one another. You want there to be some irregularity. And irregularity is what you see in nature, and it's what makes nature so beautiful, is that all the shapes are irregular in nature. So now tap, 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 and now we just flow, tap, flow, let the brush flow. The thicker you paint, the more it flows. And that's a quote from John Singer Sargent, and just with a few little touches of the brush right there, now all of a sudden, that, you know, that starts to look like waves. And uh, this is, once again, it's not science, it's, it's not uh, magic, it's just paint handling, which I guess is a science in a way, so I take that back. That is a science in, in a way, but 
it is just as simple as that and now I can add a little bit more light drawing a little more stuff into the into the light if I want to and that's why it was important to keep that a little bit dark but yet we can still add more uh, complexity to the sky so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to once again use more white and you're gonna go through a lot of white I'm using more titanium white for this this is quite an expensive painting if you're using uh, colors like this and in fact I'm probably gonna switch actually I know I'm gonna switch to my water mixable colors because you can actually mix water mixable oil paints with traditional so long as you don't use water so uh, that's what I'm going to do. I just put a ton of Cobra Talons paint on my palette there. And I'm going to keep the tube half open. So now what I'm going to do is add more white to this. And now we're going to add another plane into the sky. A whole another plane into the sky. And this is going to create a lot more depth in the shape right there moving the brush around and I can make it a little bit more blue if I want to adding phthalo turquoise and I'm letting it mix with everything that's on here so a little bit more blue with phthalo turquoise phthalo turquoise is a beautiful color to use for this stuff because it is so vibrant it's got some yellow undertones and now we're mixing it into what is already on the canvas and now we'll add more white in here and all of a sudden now we have more clouds more volume to the clouds like that because we have plane against plane and that creates the clouds plane it uh, plane against plane creates the effect that you want the more planes that you have the more elegant your painting is going to be whether it is a landscape whether it's a portrait a still life doesn't matter planes are going to be what's going to give you that effect and so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more of the phthalo turquoise into the background area right here the background area of the sky and now we're going to get into the smaller shapes and working our way around the sky like that gives us complete and total freedom to work your way around release some energy if you had a rough day at work or something this is a great exercise just slam just move the paint around it's a very freeing thing to do it's a lot of fun and now uh, now we're going to close in on the shapes for the sky so now i'm going to stand back i'm going to blur my eyes at my image a little bit and now i'm going to pick and choose some areas to start to add more light to so here for example follow the brush around right here there's going to be a little bit more light and then we're going to add some darks to it soon so a little bit more light as that goes back in space and now more white right around here gives us a better illusion of the cloud more white up here for the highlight of the cloud make sure that there's a nice highlight there it's, it's nice and easy nice and easy highlight there nice highlight up here and now we're going to use the same brush a little bit more blue and we'll add some violet to it so it's blue and it's a little bit of violet in there and now we're going to start to put some more careful uh, underplanes for the clouds and not all over the place just in selected areas so up here down here and that should be good okay and now a little bit more violet into the sky and this gives us some of the clouds the darker clouds that sit on the sky because there is some precipitation uh, going on in the sky here it's not all bright blue skies so a little bit of precipitation onto the top right there and we're gonna go a little bit longer than 30 minutes so we're probably gonna go just a little over uh, the 30 minutes and in class I will do this in the entire uh, two-hour session I'm not going to work this fast in class now we're going to go and add a little bit more violet and some more blue phthalo turquoise and dioxazine purple are wonderful colors to start to 
do these things with and there's a cast shadow right over here pull this up right there now we get to sharpen this uh, turning plane we're going to add some orange to it to brown it out a little bit and now we've got a little bit more depth to that uh, plane there and like i said like i promised we're going to talk about atmospheric perspective so the further things get the lighter they get and the less warm they get so this actually doesn't have to look that dark because if i make it too dark if i make that plane too dark guess what that is going to look like it's really close to us now if i do something uh to the contrary right there if i pull in a nice dark over there guess what this is now going to appear closer to us do you see that that is the illusion of atmospheric perspective that starts to look closer to us and now once again i'm going to get back to the dark here and I'm going to just pull away over here. This is going to be one nice standing cloud right there. Make this very simple, nice and easy, simple shapes. Make your shapes simple and easy to work with, just like with portraiture. When the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. And now this cloud tapers in like that. It has a nice little shape. And you can play around with your clouds and you can add different kinds of textures, different types of shapes if you want to. You can put a duck in there, you can put a cow, you can put a little, a little horse there, you can do whatever you want with it. You're totally at liberty to uh, create whatever effects that you want. Now with the horizon line, I'm drawing another light over here because we're going to start to add little boats. Uh, we're going to start to add little boats and um, more stuff to the horizon, but what we want is to continue to push it as bright as we can to get the lightest effect that we can. So titanium white as much as we can. And even so, I can use the palette knife and mix it like this. You see that phthalo turquoise and titanium white, mostly titanium white. And I can get this with the palette knife and I can add it right there beautiful that is super bright and the thickness of it also helps but you don't want to be cheesy with it you don't want to just like put that big thick mark there and um, leave it there because it it looks nice you actually want to finesse it so i'm finessing the the thickness of it right i'm not going to let it sit just one thick line so that's it that's the the texture that i want with it so now with a smaller brush the smaller brushes we're going to start to add the uh, little boats in the background remember atmospheric perspective so these things are actually going to get a little bit lighter uh, so how do you add boats in the distant landscape well you just put a little dot right there make sure it's not too dark a little little smudge here a little smudge there that's one boat remember you're grouping you don't want things to be too close to one another and you don't want them to be well actually i take it back you can have things close to one another but you don't want them to be symmetrical. And so now another line goes over here. See this and this, they're not equidistant to that shape over there. And always follow the rule of odd numbers. So that's three, we're good. Add another here. And now that's four, we're not good. So we're gonna add another down here. Now we're good because we have uh, five. So we have a grouping of five odd numbers there. We're gonna take a clean brush and we're going to add the light on the sails of each boat and these don't have to be so detailed honestly it can just be a touch of the brush and the illusion is that you have something in the distance there that um, that reads so next we're going to take this dark brush and just straight up ultramarine blue to the brush we're going to add a nice little triangular shape here nice little triangular shape right up there and we're going to let this shape become uh, the beginning of a lighthouse so now with the light brush we're going to do nothing different with it we're going to get the light brush and we're going to add a little bit of light here next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the dark brush and we're going to add a little bit of orange to it and make it a little bit more brown and this is going to create a shadow shape and that cast shadow shape is going to give us a little more form add a little yellow to it a little bit of yellow to it and now we're going to follow along here and it's going to give us even more form remember atmospheric perspective things that are further away aren't necessarily that dark so what we're going to do is add a little bit of blue and make this 
just a tad bit lighter and maybe a strand here and there this gives us a little bit of texture we're going to throw in a highlight on the front of this little thing a little little house right there that gives us a, a little highlight there we're going to take the dark brush just like with portraiture going between light and dark as frequently as we can and keeping it as organized as we can we're going to put the roof on this um, the uh, lighthouse Okay, landscapes in general don't necessarily need sharp edges like this, but it is nice when you can have them. When you have a, a physical object in the in the painting that has some kind of substance to it uh, in terms of geometry, you know, like rectangles and squares and things like that. So there's a little line coming out of that right there, and it looks like a structure. From the distance that's all we want is for it to look like a structure from the distance and now we're narrowing it down we're getting closer towards the end of this little demonstration so we're going to add a touch more light right here and now we're going to finesse everything we're going to kill off things that we don't want to necessarily be that dark and um, because we did start off with the dark so this gives us now control over the range so this gives us a whole new plane up here. The more planes that you can paint with, the more dimension you'll have in your painting. And uh, in terms of color relationship, this is a little bit more yellow than that. So I'm going to add a little more blue to this plane up here, which gives it a little more finesse, a little bit more of a, a story to go along with it. And the more planes that you add, the more form that you can work with so I'm going to add another little distant plane here with just a brown brownish color now I'm being purposefully vague because you can actually use any any kind of brown shape it doesn't matter really uh, it's not like portraiture you know it's not like if I make the uh, sclera of the eyes too light or something or too red or something like that like you know they can look like bloodshot eyes here we got a lot more freedom we can move these shapes around and now we're going to go back to the water why not we're going to add more uh, little touches like that see those are very symmetrical so what we want to do is make them a little irregular and remember light and shadow light and shadow are the two most important concepts in all of painting light and shadow light and shade so now we're going to pull this in and this is going to create another plane here so remember wet on wet painting the more we pull in these planes uh, the more effect that we have uh, in terms of the alla prima uh, effect of light and dark here so now we're starting to get more information into the water the water is starting to look more and more dimensional and you don't need to throw in a lot of details. It doesn't need to be overly detailed, but what it needs to do is have light and shadow, light and shadow. We're gonna go with the palette knife and we're going to mix in with anything really, anything just to kill off the light. It could be orange, it could be, it could be blue. It doesn't matter what it is. Now we're gonna stand back. We're gonna blur our eyes a little bit Blur your eyes to see detail, and now I'm going to look at my image, and I see, well, maybe I can pull a little more light there. So these are big shapes now in order to push the effect of light. Now, in the ending stages, what we want to do is push the light effect. So I'm going to now again blur my eyes, and I think this could have a little more light over here. So we're going to push the light over there and see how important that initial tone was to the canvas. I would not have been able to do this as efficiently without that tone because I'd be constantly fighting the white. So now I'm stepping back and, you know, I think I could add a little more. I can stand to have a little more light up here. So uh, these nice and finesse, finessing marks. These give me more control of the light range. And that's what I want. Now I'm blurring my eyes, and I see that maybe, uh, just maybe, maybe this is too blue. 
This is sticking out a little bit too much, so I'm going to finesse it a little bit, finesse. Um, make your lines graceful. And now with the light, the same light, I'm going to go to the horizon here and we're going to pull a little bit more, more of a sharp edge for that. A little bit more of a sharp edge. This also gives us some nice textures uh, to work with. And make sure that your focal point is still intact. Our focal point is right there, meaning the thing that people are going to look at first. A little bit more light there, a little bit more light there. Nice, nice and loose, like an impressionist painting. So, standing back once again, we see that perhaps we can push this a little bit lighter. And water, contrary to what you may think about the blue uh, reflecting from the sky, I'm going to add some red to it, some just cadmium red. Um, it actually has some some warmth to it, uh, oddly enough. The water can have some warmth to it. And you always want to look at these shapes of, of color in relationships to one another. Never in isolation. You don't want to look at a shape in isolation, but you want to look at it in relation to another shape. So now we're pulling this in here. And just very as asymmetrical as possibly can. We're starting to add more of these little uh, nice ripple effects. And what we're going to do is just take this brush, we're going to drag it into here, and this will create more planes for us. More planes, more depth, but the most important thing is that we capture light. That's going to be very important. That's why I'm using the palette knife. So now we're going to go with the orange, mix it in with the white like this. And if you want to have the most pure looking colors, palette knife is going to get you there uh, in a much more beautiful way than just mixing with the brush. So with the palette knife, again, what are we doing? We're making the light even stronger. So now with this, we're going to go and put this entire shape here. The light is now telling a lot of the story. So a little bit more light there now, and we can start to have more specificity with the planes. And um, being able to uh, have the power of light in your paintings is what Impressionism was all about. And this is more uh, towards Impressionism, even though we can take it more towards realism. If we want to, I think personally I like paintings that have uh, landscape paintings that have a little bit more light and a little bit less, uh, you know, of the of the careful detail and refining that you see in some more realist landscapes. Uh, but I like it all really. It's all it's all fun for me. So adding a little bit more there, and that should be pretty good. So now I'm standing back, blurring my eyes. Making sure nothing is screaming at me, nothing is overly incorrect. Um, the only thing that's screaming at me now is that this light perhaps got a little confused. And uh, let's see, we're pretty much there. Pretty much there, just maybe a little more. Finesse there, something there. And you know what? There's a person standing, and I'm wondering, do I want to put that person there? I, I guess. So we're going to put a little line right here, our little stick figure person. Draw that line over there. That creates an L. This is going to give us a lot more perspective. I'm going to go with uh, Thalo Turquoise. A line over there. And if you want to see a close-up, uh, here you go. You can see the close-up. So see how we're creating this little tiny uh, person here. Switch to the light brush and there's going to be a little bit of a, a light over here, kind of like they're carrying a bag or something. And then we're going to add a little bit uh, just a spot of red, just straight up cadmium red with a little bit of 
straight up cadmium red with a little bit of a lizard and crimson. And then we're just going to add straight up cadmium orange, the light and shadow. Remember, warmer colors pull closer towards us than uh, cooler colors do. And uh, yeah, because of the grouping, that's one and that's two. Well, maybe we can add just a little pigeon or something that's hanging out over here. Just to throw in a little shadow there. And now the uh, frontal object. And this isn't going to be a pigeon anymore. This is going to be some kind of massive bird. Or it could be just any kind of piece of... Uh, a piece of junk or something lying on the beach because we don't want everything to be you know so predictable sometimes things that you can't quite picture end up becoming more interesting than things that are uh, more of a literal interpretation of what it is that we're looking at in terms of finesse just maybe this got a little too noisy So I'm calming it down, a little bit of thalo turquoise, or just ultramarine blue, whichever. And we're going to give a nice little ridge to these shadow, or to these clouds, the shadow around the clouds. You see how, how that, you see how that creates a little bit more, a little bit more depth. Like I said, we went a little further in this landscape than I initially thought I would. But okay, that should be good. That should be good. That's our little landscape. We've painted it in about 42 minutes. A little bit longer than I thought it would take, but it was uh, definitely a lot of fun to be able to put all these shapes together. And now we have a nice landscape scene uh, to work with. So remember, this is a supplemental video series for viewers and students that will be taking in-person classes with me. The reference that I looked at, which I didn't perfectly copy, I just looked at, uh, to create this landscape is in the description box of this video. I will put it there so you can see uh, the reference. There's also going to be the syllabus there uh, for students so you can see what we will do in class or what we have done in class. And that should be about it. If you want to take classes in person with me, also check out the link in the description box of this video so you can uh, take a look at where I'm teaching in person classes if you live in the Maryland, DC, Virginia area. I wish you all the very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.